And we're out with the Flyfly Fly MiG-29. It's on a re-maiden flight. As you can see, it's uh, had a lot of nose repairs done. Uh, it flew here. Uh, the wind was coming from um, behind, uh, which direction? The wind was coming from the road direction, so I had to land towards the road and managed to somehow glide straight through past myself quite fast and it just kept going straight into the fence line and sort of exploded the nose area. Um, that'll all be filled and fiberglass later and the whole plane will be repainted. I'm just test flying again to make sure everything but that's how I like it. It's flying on 7S so it has um, two 70 amp HV ESCs and it's running 70 millimeter fans so they're um, Evo Evo rotors running inside CS10 housings with 2200kb in runner motors I think it's the Dr. Mad Trust 2970-2200kb so we'll get it all ready to go and give it a fly around Just a quick revisit of the MIG on the underside. Uh, I reverse the landing gear retraction directions so that they mimic the full scale. Uh, it just pained me when the main gear were going backwards, it was the main thing. But there were a couple of that were to to true to scale. So there you see, these are down the back. I've made up covers for that area yet. So that'll just be a very simple couple of plywood panels, very thin bass ply. And the nose cone I've replaced with a 3D printed cone because the stock shape is nothing like a MiG-29 nose. Plus seeing it had been all destroyed uh, like a jigsaw puzzle, I did actually repair it all and it was back in shape like originally. But when I looked at it I just thought, oh, that's, that's something that needs to be changed. I have a pitot tube somewhere but didn't bring it. Um, let's see. Yeah, so basically the landing gear tracks in the correct manner. So now we're ready. It's all powered up, balanced, ready to fly so we'll get it into the air. So now we're out with the MiG-29, ready for its remaiden. Um, I know it flies really nicely, but I'm worried a little bit because on the last flights, I had a problem on the, the third flight or fourth flight, can't remember which one, where one of the motors definitely dropped off in power. You could hear it warbulating and the plane slowed down and I was running about 75% throttle to fly around so I'm pretty sure it's flying on one motor and the other one quite sickly uh, I tested it at home it's all running runs the full power all right so I don't know what happened um, it's just hard to know it, it's almost like I hadn't flown very long but it's almost like it went into LVC on one ESC I didn't think about throttling back and powering up again maybe that would have fixed it but um so that's the only thing I'm worried about is what caused that was it an overheat or something else wrong well we should be right hopefully it's uneventful that because of the positive uh, angle of attack it has it on the ground it just lifts off naturally quite easily now I noticed last time when I was flying it it is you know quite a slow plane it seems to have a lot of drag probably from those huge inputs being way bigger than they need to be quite glary. I took the lenses out of my hat cam glasses but 
but it is glary to watch. Oh, well, that's not a bad, that's only 50% throttle. It doesn't really go a lot faster if you use a lot more power, so it would have a lot more thrust and that would allow you to do some aerobatics or whatever better. Um, but it's really, again, because it's draggy, you just don't get um, great use out of the high power anyway, so it's just no point flying around faster than that really. Um, let's check the 45.9 amps. So that's using 45 1, amps 1, to fly around like that. Hours. Two minutes. So I will um, make sure I'll try a roll. Very slow roll, probably needs high rates. I'm using my normal rate, mid rate, because I've got triple rates, but that's a very lethargic roll. So what we'll do, we'll come around for a high speed run and see what changes. So we'll go to full power now. Um, high power makes no difference to the thrust line. Yeah, that wasn't, I mean, it's not a bad speed. You don't need a true supersonic speed in a RC model because you just haven't got the room. Uh, and this sort of speed is more like, if you went to an air show, the speeds they would do, more like this. Three minutes. Um, being tailor on only control, it's just really nice. It just... Whatever the balance is, I, I could probably make it a bit nicer with a bit of differential, but it turns into a bank really nicely without a, a drop like a lot of, this is not a true delta, but it's basically a delta wing. And they fall out of the air like anything when they bank, but the balances of whatever the tailorons are doing, and I've got no differential, but it just makes it turn really nice and clean, not showing up the typical delta fall into a turn. I think we need one click of right aileron. 24.8 volts, 51 amps, 3, 1,115 million Oh, that's about time to consider landing. Oh, I probably should have practiced a bit more, because that's what happened last time I just I've actually had three good landings, but one the last one I just got totally wrong on distances and how far it was going to glide and it just came past me so fast and I sort of knew it, but seeing the motors were playing up I didn't want to do a go around. And then I ended up, you know, shooting through by miles. My vision is really bad. Um, it's really glary making my eyes. Seems to be tracking a little bit funny there, but not bad. The the wheel base, the track and the wheel base are very short because the because of the way the landing gear operate and the real ones is the same. So it's quite narrow and quite short in wheel base. But it really doesn't bother it. Um, it's not skittish or it might be if it was on a hard runway, grass gives you a bit more like tram tracking where it'll make a groove in the grass and track better. But all in all, um, it flies really nicely. A little bit docile and boring, but you know, you could zip it up a bit more. I'm just doing some test flights now and don't really want to wreck it too soon. But all in all, it's very good. 26 volts, zero amps, three, 1,650 milliamp hours. So 3600 milliamp hours. That's almost back to um, 3.7 volts per cell. It's a little bit low but if it's left to rest 
it will probably just come up to 3.7 volts per cell.